Are you making these fragrance mistakes when you go on dates? Is your fragrance choice the reason you don't get a second date? Watch this video to find out. And I'm also gonna go through some fragrances that I personally love to wear and think are perfect for a date. And also a few fragrances that are marketed to men that I like to smell on the gentleman that I'm on a date with. So keep on watching and I'll get right into it. So the first mistake that some people make on a date when it comes to their fragrance is over spraying. It's kind of an obvious one, but not everyone gets it. Not everyone even realizes they're doing it. And I have been in a situation, actually it wasn't exactly a date. Myself and my friend were out in a pub and there was this guy that my friend liked. She had her eye on him. She'd known him a little while from a different activity and she sort of said she wouldn't mind getting to know him better and uh and this guy is a very attractive gentleman but when you get near him he's got quite a strong fragrance on and it it smelt cheap i don't know that it was cheap but he just wore so much of it it kind of made the effect a little cheap maybe even a little slimy or smarmy a little bit trying too hard and I never said anything, and I'm normally the one who recognises smells and fragrances, but actually my friend said, I wish he didn't wear so much perfume though, yet she really didn't appreciate that, it put her off him. So it's something to bear in mind because there are a lot of people here on YouTube that will tell you to spray loads, to wear loads of fragrance, but actually you are putting people off when you do that. There might be a few people that appreciate it if they happen to really like the fragrance you're wearing and they don't mind being smacked in the face with it. But I think most people appreciate subtlety and overspraying is just, especially on a date, it's just unlikely to do you any favours. It's much more likely to put someone off. It's much better to, if anything, underspray if you can't quite get it right, rather underspray than overspray. And when someone gets a little bit closer and they catch a little hint of your fragrance, that's going to draw them in. That's going to make them intrigued and say, oh, something smells really nice that he's wearing. And it might even start a conversation and it might encourage the person to get a little bit closer. So rather underspray than overspray if you can't quite figure it out. You can always get advice from friends and family test out how many sprays works for you and it's going to be different with different scents which is leading me on to my second point is to know the fragrance you're going to be wearing on the date so it's not a great idea to buy a brand new fragrance that day so walk down walk downtown <laughs> pop into boots and buy the first thing that the sales assistant tries to flog you and you spray you do one spray on your hand and go yeah that smells really good I'll have a bottle of that and then a hundred quid later and you're at home, you've had your shower and you start spraying it. You don't know how many sprays because you've never worn it before. You don't know how strong it is. And then you don't know how it develops either. And you do not know what that fragrance is going to do on your skin. No fragrance stays the same as the opening notes. So it is going to change. So if you don't know the fragrance, you really don't know what's going to happen and whether you're going to like it later. And more importantly, when it comes to a date, you don't know if your date is going to like that fragrance on you later either. So know what you are going to be wearing on a date, I'd say. It's not the time to be experimenting with a brand new perfume, unless you really don't give a crap. I would say the next mistake people make is by wearing really, really popular, hyped, well-known fragrances. If you buy the most sold fragrance in the world and you wear it on a date, there is a very good chance it's going to trigger some kind of memory. Now that might be a good thing, but it might also be a bad thing. A smell is a very fastest way to trigger a memory, faster than anything else, faster than a visual, faster than a song. The smell will hit your nasal receptors and there's something that goes on chemically that sends straight to your brain 
the certain part that triggers memories. So if you're wearing a fragrance that's really popular and let's say it reminds your date of an ex-boyfriend that broke her heart, probably not a good thing. What if it reminds her of an ex-boyfriend that she still loves and has feelings for. Probably not a good thing for you. She might enjoy the fact that you're wearing that fragrance, but it's probably not in your best interest. And to avoid doing that, you just need to avoid those top selling fragrances. You know the ones I mean, um, Coco Mademoiselle for the ladies, Dior Sauvage, just those hyped, very well known fragrances. They're good and they're probably great for other situations for work for um, going out with friends all of that but on a date at least at the beginning stages if it's a first sort of two or three dates probably avoid anything that's really really well known so saying that shop around don't buy the top shelf stuff there's really really good fragrances out there that are not being pushed that are sitting in bargain shelves in the back of the store in chemists you don't have to spend a fortune you can obviously go niche you can go indie and you'll find something less likely to trigger a memory but if you're not that into fragrance and you just basically want to smell good you do not need to spend a fortune and you can just find something that's just not as well known or even go back to something that used to be popular and isn't really trending anymore so for example Dior Eau Sauvage so not Sauvage which is probably the number one selling men's fragrance in the world I'm just guessing here but the Eau Sauvage is a lovely light sparkling citrus it's very light and it's got lots of hedione in it, which is a really attractive aroma chemical that's a little bit like jasmine, but not quite so heavy. It's, it's light and fresh and it's a really beautiful fragrance. So something like that is probably not being worn by anyone these days or hardly anyone and certainly unlikely to trigger any sort of memory. Another mistake people make is by wearing fragrances that, are, that have really polarizing scent profiles they have really strong heavy notes so whether it's a heavy uh, oud or very heavy patchouli or leather or animalic notes something like kuros which is famously pissy those are fragrances to avoid until you know someone well enough that they will be open with you about whether or not they like your fragrance. But on those first few dates, stay away from really polarizing scents. If in doubt, I always say keep it light, keep it uh, classic, citrus, woody, musk, something like that. And also saying, saying that with polarizing fragrances, another thing that can happen is if you choose something that's a bit old school, so something really sort of vintage and old school that has an old fashioned feel can be a little off putting as well, especially if you are of the younger generation. Also, it can trigger, again, can trigger memories. I know whenever I smell anyone wearing Issy Miyake, whether it's the men's or the women's version, it takes me straight back to sort of the late 80s, early 90s when lots of people were wearing it and i instantly feel like it's old fashioned that's that's my perception i'm not i'm not right and i'm not wrong it's just that my perception is it's old fashioned so if you're wearing something that's quite well known but was released a long time ago it might come off old fashioned just something to bear in mind now this isn't fragrance related exactly but one thing that does come up quite often. I've definitely experienced this with dates before and I've probably, in fact, almost certainly been guilty of it. And it's something I really try to avoid now is, <laughs> is eating garlic and or onion within sort of two days of the date. So the problem with gar garlic in particular, but onion as well, the scent hangs around, it sort of sits in your gut and it doesn't matter how good you are at cleaning your teeth and using mouthwash and breath mints, for a good day to two days, the scent can still come back up out of your mouth. It's gross, 
it's not pleasant but also with garlic in particular it comes out of the pores in your skin so either as your body warms up and the scent that comes from your skin can be garlicky and it's just not pleasant so it's not exactly fragrance related but it is to do with the scent that you are giving off i would highly recommend avoiding eating garlic and onion at least uh, one day before the date and ideally two days if you happen to accidentally do that or you have a very last minute date you can try to sort of hydrate and eat more neutral bland foods like bread to sort of sit in your stomach and hopefully soak some stuff up um, but otherwise yeah the the scent of garlic is virtually impossible to get rid of even if you're not aware of it and oftentimes people uh, once they've eaten garlic don't remember that they've eaten garlic or they've forgotten but they actually given off the scent and not noticing it and it's I think because you're, it's in you and you're just used to it, but it's not, it's not attractive, is it? And the final mistake is wearing the wrong type of fragrance for the event or time of year. So generally speaking, you would want to wear something lighter in the summer, a bit lighter, a little bit fresher. If you are in the midst of cold weather, you can wear something darker, you can wear something that's ambery and rich. If you're going for an outdoor picnic, for example, you can wear something light and fresh and citrusy. And if you're gonna be going to a really busy, crowded pub, you can definitely wear something a lot heavier because there's gonna be a lot of people around to make that impact. But the worst thing you can do is wear something too heavy when it's not called for. So imagine you're going on a lovely picnic on a bright, sunny summer's day and you choose something like Tuscan Leather by Tom Ford, which is a really heavy, leathery scent. It's very dark. It's a bit gothic and it's just not something that's gonna be pleasant to smell when it's very, very warm. And if you're gonna get hot as well, you're gonna radiate that really strong fragrance and it's just gonna be completely the wrong fragrance for the wrong situation. It's like if you were planning a date and let's imagine you're, you've, invi you've invited a girl to go for a hike and she turns up in high heels and a skin tight short dress. It's the wrong outfit for the situation. And it's the same thing with fragrance. It's just gonna be an, a little bit of an off vibe. It's not necessarily gonna absolutely ruin the moment or the date. It could maybe, but it would just feel a bit weird, a little bit off. So now I'm gonna show you some fragrances that I love for dates. So we'll start with, I'm going to show you one that is marketed to men that I absolutely love and it's Valentino Uomo and I actually like this one and I like the intense version. This gets a little bit of stick for not being brilliant at lasting. I actually find it pretty good. I've worn it myself on quite a few occasions and it's a powdery, so there's bergamot in here which lends it a little freshness, but it's more about this powdery. It's an irisy fragrance, even though iris is not listed, but it does have that really irisy, like the Dior Homme line as well. And I would say you can pretty much wear anything from the Dior Homme line on a date. It's, they're beautiful. And this fits in that same window of those kind of fragrances, powdery, light, slightly woody, musky, there's hazelnut in here and cocoa, but it's not too rich and sweet. It's very attractive scent, draws you in, but it's not sickly sweet. It doesn't smell girly, but it probably, some might say a little metro, if that's politically correct way to speak anymore. Correct me if I am speaking out of turn, but yeah, I love this and I would absolutely love for a gentleman caller to be wearing Valentino Uomo, but equally any anyone can wear it for sure. So one that I personally love for dates is, well, look at my 
my skanky bottle needs a good old clean. Rolling in love. I mean, this is the big guns. <laughs> the name kind of says it all. So you might not want this on the first date. This is a, it's tuberose. There's also some other white floral in here. I think there's a tiny bit of orange blossom and maybe some jasmine, but it's a white floral, mostly tuberose lead fragrance that has a bit of a gourmand touch. To me, it smells a little bit like almond biscuits, like Italian biscuits. And then the dry down has this amazing musk accord. It's got ambrette in it, which is a beautiful skin-like powdery soft musk. And there's some sweet notes. I think there's some vanilla. It smells like there's vanilla to me. And it's not the biggest in your face fragrance. Quite strong when you first apply it, but within an hour or two, it's settled down. So it's a very much come hither, enticing scent, especially in the dry down with that gorgeous skin-like musk. So it's a really great, more intimate setting style date fragrance. And I just find it very beautiful, very enticing. Now, this one's marketed to the men, although again, I do think anyone can wear it. It's Tom Ford Noir Extreme. Now, there is now a Noir Extreme Parfum, and there's also the original Noir, and all of that line, even the one marketed to ladies as well, um, which I can't remember what it's called, but similar name. They are all gorgeous, spicy, ambery fragrances of slightly varying sort of strengths and um, very slightly different notes and stuff, but basically they're all mildly gourmand, spicy and ambery fragrances. So this has a kaifi note. Kaifi is an Indian dessert. It's a frozen dessert. It's uh, made with cardamom. So it's got quite a strong cardamom that's also kind of coming off a little minty, but very rich in spices. There's a little bit of saffron. I think there's some nutmeg. And then you have this beautiful, rich, ambery woody very sensual sexy <laughs> very sexy base and i just think that i would very much appreciate gentleman caller <laughs> to be wearing tom ford noir now one for me on a lighter note so one that i would wear on a daytime date maybe for a lunch maybe for a picnic maybe for or could be for a summer evening, something that's not heavy, something that's great in the warmer weather. I would go for Levant. This is Girl Next Door Pretty Musky. So the, there's notes in here. There's quite a lot of florals um, off the top of my head. Rose, peony, lily of the valley, orange blossom. You've got a lot of musk, a ton of musk, sort of like um, the sort of amount of musk you have in the Narciso Rodriguez fragrances, it's like, it's similar to that. Quite powdery, with a slightly powdery, woody nuance to it. And then in the dry down, there is a note of amber, but I would say it's, I don't get an amber, because amber's generally quite rich. This is more like a vanilla powder to me in the dry down, light vanilla powder. And there's some citruses in the top, which keep it light and fresh as well. It's extremely pretty. There's something about the musks in here. The musks make this so special and it is absolutely perfect, romantic, girly, innocent kind of fragrance. So it's not gonna be your seductress femme fatale perfume. It is more of your easygoing, uh, sweet and kind girl next door kind of fragrance. Now, I don't have the next one I'm going to talk about, but this is a really great all-rounder that smells beautiful. It's the original D&G Pour Homme. Not Dolce & Gabbana the one, not, not any of that modern stuff. I actually don't like uh, the one. I find it cloying. Um, I just don't enjoy that at all. That's my particular preference. Uh, you may well find that that works for you on a date wouldn't work for you on a date with me might work for you on a date with someone else but i i love d and g pour homme it's a sort of citrusy fougere like you have this sweet hay that's beautiful it is so classy it's quite light so you'd want to spray quite a lot of that one and you'd keep it for summer spring 
or anytime you want to just keep your fragrance light and classy and it's kind of like brings to mind a crisp white shirt uh just a gentleman a classy sophisticated understated gentleman but it's got a gentle sweetness to it a little bit of a powderiness as well it's really classy it's the epitome of italian class in my humble opinion so check that one out dng poor hom also gets some bad press for its performance and people talk about seeking out vintage batches I don't know anything about any of that. I just know that the current formulation is still beautiful. I can't really tell the difference between older and newer. You might just need to respray, take a little decant out with you. If you're out for a while, definitely get it all over your clothes and it will do you very well. And I think you can't go wrong. I don't think anyone's going to find that offensive or unpleasant or at all. And it's not, it's not one that's getting worn a lot. So it's unlikely to trigger any memories. And then my last date fragrance that I love to wear is Ilang Ilang Nosy Bee from Paris Monte Carlo. This is a very rich, sweet Ilang Ilang with a little bit of spice and a very rich, voluptuous vanilla accord. It smells so natural and it's just beautiful. I actually did wear this fairly recently on a date and got a compliment. So definitely tried and trusted tried and tested and i can't i just i love this one day night summer winter anywhere in between yes it's quite rich and sweet so maybe you wouldn't go for it on the hottest of days apart from that it's sexy it's exotic and it's sweet and it's rich and it's just lovely but it doesn't smell like anything else out there and it's not one that's very popular and is likely to trigger any sort of memories with anyone. So I absolutely love that for a date. I feel very confident when I'm wearing this one. So that's it. Now do let me know, do you make any of these mistakes yourself? Or have you had an experience where someone has made a bit of a fragrance faux pas? Please do share in the comments. If you like this video, Feel free to tip me on ko-fi.com. I will share the link in the description below. I really appreciate if you choose to do that. Otherwise, I'd love it if you would like the video and I will see you in another video. Bye.